Hi everybody, it's your life science slash biology teacher, Mr. Poser, and today we are continuing our eighth unit on natural selection by getting into, well, natural selection. And that's the, really the process behind this whole evolution thing. So in our last video, we talked about all the different forms of evidence that support the idea that, hey, actually all living things are related and uh, species come from other species, which means every living thing is related to every other living thing. Um, through evolution, and this is the process by which that happens, okay? So if last week video was all about evolution, this is about the driving force behind it, which is natural selection. So first question I have for you is, why are there 300,000 different species of beetle? And I think that's actually a low ball number. I think there's a lot more than that. Um, but consider that for a second. Why are there so many species of beetle when there's all, really only one species of uh, human being, right? Um, and then check it out. Do you see them? Do you see them? It's hard to, right? Because they're very, very good at camouflage and they're very good at hiding from predators or other things that might disturb their habitat. So why are they so good at it? How do they become that way? Why are they so good at it? Let's talk about that in this video. All right, so, so just a recap is of what evolution is. It's the process of biological change by which descendants come to differ from their ancestors, AKA descent with modification. Uh, this is what we wrote down in our last video here. This this is the same slide except for, uh, except for a little bit different. Um, second bullet point here. And in fact, the idea of evolution, species changing over time, it didn't originate with Darwin. It originated in ancient Greece. I believe it was Aristotle um, that first wrote his wonderings about, oh yeah, I think actually species do change over time, or maybe that maybe that's what they do. Um, but it wasn't really until Darwin that like we figured out like, oh yeah, they really, really do. Um, so how exactly does evolution happen? How do species come from other species? How do species change over time? And the main way is through natural selection. It's the mechanism by which individuals that have inherited beneficial adaptations show differential reproductive success. It is the true driver of evolution. And uh, as I explain how natural selection works, I'm going to be using this image on the left over here talking about uh, these beetles in this, uh, in this environment that are trying to evade their predators. Um, these, these pink or pink blue birds over here. Um, so let's get started. Let's walk. Be natural selection is best explained as we're going through an example. So I, that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. Okay. Um, and the bottom line, before we get into it here, the bottom line of natural selection is that individuals with certain inherited traits, that means traits that you were born with, not like that you acquire, tend to survive and reproduce at higher rates because of those traits. Okay, some individuals are just born with a slight edge over the competition, a very slight edge. It might be a very minor change in either their behavior or their, their um, any other trait, any other physical trait. Um, they might have a slight edge over everybody else, and that's going to allow them to not only survive better, but also produce more offspring, and those offspring are also going to have that trait, and that's why... Um, that's why populations change over time. So here's the beetles. Um, in this top left corner, this is where we begin. So this is step one, this is step two, this is step three, this is step four um, of the natural selection process. And in order for natural selection to occur, there needs to be, there needs to be genetic variation. A population must have genetic variation in order for natural selection to occur. If every organism was the same and had the same exact traits, everything was clones, then none of the, uh, if everybody was special, nobody would be special. Everybody would have the same exact traits. Nobody would have an edge over everybody else. And that means the population would not change over time. If there's a, some kind of environmental pressure that's going to cause um, species to have to, um, you know, compete for resources and, and compete to survive, nobody's going to have an edge if there's no genetic variation. And that is a super important point um, as we go throughout this, the rest of this year, actually, um, talking about biology and life science. Hey, where does this genetic variation comes from? come from? Um, well, we, what we talked about, that was a couple units ago. No, last unit. It was last unit uh, where we talked about how meiosis and produces genetic variation and mutations result in genetic variation. So why do these individuals in this population become different from one another? It's because of meiosis and sexual reproduction and mutations. Um, and these traits have to be inherited, right? They can't be acquired. So for example, right, if I want to get a bunch of tattoos all over my body, are those tr tattoos going to be passed down to my kids? No, they're not, because those are not genetic traits. So genetic traits are what are passed down through natural selection, not acquired traits, 
okay? And the same idea was passed down by a guy named Jean-Baptiste Lamarck who thought that, um, and then not to, dis not to, you know, make this guy look bad because he was doing the best he can, right? But his explanation for why species change over time was that, you know, oh, giraffes, they stretch their necks over their lifetime and then they pass down their stretched out necks and that's not how this works. That's like me saying, I, if I get a bunch of tattoos, I'm, I'm going to pass down those tattoos. That's not how it works, okay? Um, so the, here's the really important point. They have to have genetic variation. Species uh, have to have it. And individuals have to be different from one another for natural selection to occur. Okay, but here's another condition of natural selection here. Okay, you're living out in this environment. There's, here's these beetles, um, and they live in an ecosystem. We're going to talk about ecosystems later this year. But uh, ecosystems, it says right there, are unable to support all individuals within a population um, due to an age of reproduction causing competition among offspring. Okay, so that essentially means that more offspring, more organisms are born than can survive in a particular environment. So that's called overproduction. And as a result, these uh, individuals have to compete with one another for survival, and they have to compete with each other over limited resources, okay? Because, well, it, it can't support everybody. Not everybody's going to survive, um, and that's the harsh reality for, uh, for living things. This is, this is how natural selection is. It's a battlefield um, where you gotta, you got to kill or be killed almost, or you have to survive, right? Um, so that's how, that's how this works, and that's another component of natural selection here. Variation overproduction, um, inheritance, meaning that traits need to be passed down and they need to be genetic, overproduction and um, competition is that next step. Okay? But then the, the most crucial step of natural selection here, and really the main idea, is that individuals with advantageous traits, with low, those genetic traits that help them, give them an edge over their, environment, uh, over their competitors, okay? Um, in a particular environment, survive and reproduce better than others, thus passing their traits onto the offspring. Or as it says in this picture, the more adapted individuals within a population are more likely to survive, while those with less adapted characteristics are less likely. Okay, so you're, you're born with a trait that's going to help you survive and reproduce. Great. If you're not, sucks. You know, you're not going to pass down that trait. And those with the, the trait that's going to help them survive better than you, well, they're going to pass down that trait, and the population is going to change over time. Um, so this is what we call di differential survival and reproduction, and it's the, the fourth step is we're going to walk through natural selection here. Um, and then finally, as that trait gets passed down, well, certain colors in this uh, beetle example, um, certain colors are selected against, and certain colors are selected for. Okay, so uh, as this trait gets passed down, the, the trait that's selected for is going to become more common um, in the population that this trait, than the trait that was selected against. Okay, so you're going to hear me say those words a lot. Selected for, selected against. Selected for means that it's a favorable trait. Selected against means it's, it means it's an unfavorable trait. Okay, and the last step of uh, natural selection here is adaptation, or A, um, as we're going to see in our chart here. Uh, the individuals with the advantageous traits continue to produce more offspring until they outnumber the less adapted individuals. And that brown, in this beetle's uh, population here, uh, the brown trait becomes an adaptation. It allows it to better survive and reproduce in its environment. Um, because look at the environment. It's brown, and, well, these birds are not going to be, uh, these birds are not going to be as good at getting the brown beetles as they are the blue and green, because the blue and green ones are easier to pick out. Okay, so very, very simple, concrete example of natural selection here. Um, and what the main product of natural selection is here, well, it's changing organisms over time, uh, or in species over time, but it also produces adaptations. And those are features that allow an organism to survive and reproduce in its environment. Okay, so in this example, as I was just saying, brown color is an adaptation for beetles in that environment. And we're going to probably see more and more, more brown, beetle, bleh, brown beetles as, uh, as the generations pass in this population of beetles, okay? Um, so I already said that, okay? But, you know, the thing is about planet Earth um, is that environments change all the time. The, the planet, due to plate tectonics, due to um, mass extinctions, due to all sorts of different events, environments change on Earth all the time. And as a result, living things change as well. Um, and the, the selective pressure or the... Um, the, the factors in the environment 
that cause certain traits to be better than others, those change, okay? It's, it, who knows what's gonna happen here? So, for example, I just kind of, I don't know, Photoshop this picture a little bit, um, but if all of a sudden a bunch of rain falls and we get a, we get a new, completely new environment and everything turns green, well, what's gonna be selected for now? It's gonna be the green beetles over the brown beetles um, because the brown ones are gonna be easier to pick out, okay? Right? So fitness, um, it's not whoever's strongest or biggest or fastest. Fitness is a measure of the ability to survive and produce more offspring than other members of a population in a given environment. So the brown beetles were more fit in that first environment. They had more fitness in this environment, but the green beetles are going to have more fitness in this environment. And fitness isn't like, you know, physical fitness. It's not like you know, what you talk about in PE, fitness is how well can you survive and reproduce? How many successful offspring can you produce um, in your environment? And that's what it's all about. So here's the acronym that I've been referring to um, with regards to natural selection this whole time. First and foremost, variation has to be there. Individuals have to be different from one another due to sexual reproduction and mutations. They have to have different genetic traits. Those traits need to be passed down from parent to offspring. They cannot be acquired. Um, more individuals in a population are produced than can survive, thus individuals compete for limited resources. Those with traits that allow them to better survive and reproduce than their competitors pass down that trait, and well, they survive, and then they pass down that trait to their offspring. And over time, the, the more advantaged individuals um, with that genetic trait that allows them to survive will e eventually outnumber the ones that do not have that trait, and thus that trait becomes an adaptation. All right, so this is the context that we're going to be talking about natural selection with um, for the remainder of for the remainder of this class, really. Okay, um, the most famous example, one of the most famous examples of natural selection occurring, um, was a set of finches that Darwin studied himself, and that's uh, each island in the Galapagos where Darwin studied has a diff separate species of finch. Each island had a different food source, and the population changed over generations. As a result, so each one of these finches here, and I believe there's eight, seven or eight finches, had a different beak shape, um, and they evolved to act, eventually become different species. They all di evolved different uh, shapes of beak um, on account of the fact of that that each of the islands that they lived on were separate from one another and had a different main food source for the birds. Um, so they they evolved and changed over time, and one species actually became, I believe, it's like eight different species um, through natural selection. Aw, puppies! Look at them! That was a transition, right? Um, but look at the puppies! They're so cute! They're so cute! Does anybody know why puppies are so cute? Right, think about this for a second. Does a puppy's cuteness allow it to better survive and reproduce in its environment? Maybe, but it's not really natural selection. It's not really because, like, oh, they have to compete to survive. Maybe they have to compete with each other to get adopted at the kennel uh, or at the at, at wherever. Right, but uh, puppy's cuteness doesn't, you know, being cute doesn't help you survive. Okay, so where does this cuteness come from? Uh, well, we're going to talk about it here in just a second. Natural selection. It's not. It's not natural selection. Selection that's making these puppies so cute. Um, that's when the environment selects traits that help individuals survive and reproduce. But um, another way, reason that um, populations evolve and species evolve is because of us. And by us, I mean we as in human beings. We select traits for the next generation um, from one generation to the next in many different species. And that's not natural selection. That's called artificial selection. And this is I could talk about this all day, so I'm, I'm going to try and keep this brief here um, because we can, the point can be made briefly. Um, artificial selection is the process of changing a species by breeding it for certain traits. Humans use genetic variation in organisms and then pick the traits. Okay, so once upon a time, uh, dogs didn't exist. Early humans did not have dogs, and dogs were not man's best friend. Um, and every single dog species that species, every single dog breed that we have today evolved from one species, and that is Canis lupus, the gray wolf, which is a very strong, wild animal, right? Um, so over millions and millions of years, uh, wolves, those that had a friendly disposition and were not as scared of people um, as other wolves were, well, they had an advantage. 
because, you know, they could be nice to people and the people would feed them and provide them protection. And so over thousands and thousands of years, um, that kept happening and people kept picking the dogs that they wanted to, or the wolves at that time, the wolves that they wanted to breed um, for the next generation. Like, oh, I like this one because it's very friendly. Oh, I like this one because it helps me hunt. Oh, I like this one. Let's breed them and pass down those traits to the next generation so that we get the dogs that we want. Um to help us out, right? Um, so when we pick the traits, rather than the traits that are best fit for the environment, when we pick the traits that are the best fit for us, that's called artificial selection. And that's how we got dogs, every single breed of dog, everything from a, from a Shiba Inu to a Chihuahua to a Great Dane to a St. Bernard is all a descendant of the gray wolf. Right? And that's, that's our doing. That's us picking the traits that we want to, we want to the next generation not um, not the environment, right? So another great example of artificial selection is how uh, we bred crops, right? So this is uh, Brassica oreacea. Um, this, is a, uh, this is a mustard plant, okay? And then this is Teosinte, which is, a, which is an ancient grain um, that, uh, that we planted a long time ago. And these plants became the, these vegetables. There we go, the slide took a second, but... Um, Look at all the different varieties and of delicious vegetables that we have that came from basically like these grasses and these almost like weeds um, that we bred o over time and over generations and generations and generations like, right? So we picked plants that were, gave us the most food and were the most beneficial to us. We picked those and we bred them and planted their offspring in the next field for, for the next harvest, right? So over generations and generations and generations kept picking the best ones and the best ones and the best ones and the best ones. Um, so over time, the uh, I think it was like the terminal buds of this plant got bigger and bigger and bigger. The leaves of this plant got bigger and bigger and bigger and we could breed them the way that we wanted. Um, and we shape the evolution of these plants. Okay, And then it's artificial selection. So why are there so many different species of beetle? Let's talk about it. Beetles' traits have made them really successful. More successful groups tend to be more diverse, right? So the, the traits that um, varieties of beetle species have allow them to better survive and reproduce. Um, and, you know, the more successful groups of, orga or groups of species tend to be, the more diverse they tend to become. And beetles are very, very, very successful. And there are millions of species of bacteria, probably the most successful uh, group of organisms on Earth that have ever existed. Um, so natural selection at its finest. If we were to sum it up, it's like, yeah, natural selection. They're really good at surviving and reproducing. And why are these animals so good at camouflage? Well, traits develop over millions and millions of years of natural selection. Just like we saw with those, uh, those beetles. And um, another example that we're going to talk about later is the peppered moth. Um, camouflage evolves from you know, being the same color as your environment and uh, being well adapted to your environment. Um, over generations and generations, traits get passed down like that. All right, that is it for this video. I tried to wrap it up as soon as I could. Um, please let me know if you have any questions, and we will see you next time.